the Lord so much. It's been a wonderful time. It's been a wonderful season as we as we move with what God is doing in this time and in this era. You know, when I look at the things that we go through in life, most of these things, are you hearing me? Yes. 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 And praise the Lord. Most of these things, they make us strong. You know, they are not there to kill us, to destroy us, or to bring us down, but they are there to make us strong. Sometimes we begin to wonder and we begin to ask ourselves questions and say, God, why are we going through what we are going through? You know, right now, when you're looking what is happening in the world, you hear of wars, Ukraine, you hear of all these kind of things. You know, you begin to wonder and say, God, what is really, really happening? But now when you look into scripture, the Bible says these are the signs. You hear of wars. You hear of these are the signs that Jesus is about to come back. These are the signs whereby the church, you and I, we need up to now to wake up and begin to realize that uh, time is no longer on our side. No, I, I was just thinking about all this thing this morning. You know, we are, we are already getting into March. The year started yesterday, but we are already three months into the year. It, it, it means that time is no longer moving as it used to do. There, there's so much acceleration, there's so much speed in what is happening. And you and I, we need now to come to a place and a point where we jump in and we don't miss what God is doing. Uh, I just want to share uh, from this scripture. I've been reading this, this scripture this morning. I know you guys are already uh, in, the, in your next morning. Uh, we are preparing to get into our morning. From the book of Genesis, chapter number 30. I've been reading the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, chapter number 30, from verse number 25. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own people, to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives, my children for whom I've saved you and let me go for you know my service which I've done for you. And Laban said to him, please stay if I found favor in your eyes. For I've learned by experience, the other version say, for I've learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said to him, name your wages and I'll give it to you. So Jacob says to him, you know how I have saved you, how your livestock have been with me. Let's go to verse number 37. Now Jacob took for himself rolls of green poplar and of the almond and chestnut trees, peeled white stripes in them and exposed the white which was in the roads. And the roads which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutters in the watery flocks where the flock came to drink so that they should conceive when they come to drink. So the flock conceived before the roads and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled and spotted. You know, when, when I was just thinking this, this morning, I, I realized that we need to come to a place where we understand our spirituality or where we understand our place. Are, are we supposed to operate from the realm of the flesh or from the physical realm, or we are supposed to operate in the spirit realm? Do we come in and out of the spirit? Do we come in and out of the realm of the spirit, or we are supposed to stay in that realm and be able to move and to operate in the physical realm? And, and several of us, you know, it seems that we are always in and out, in and out the realm of the spirit to a place that we are not able to be effective in our day-to-day -day lives. And I, I was, I was, I've realized that the only way you and I, we can become effective in this season is when we don't operate in and out of the realm of the spirit, but we become permanent residents or permanent people in the realm of the spirit. We are spirit beings living in the physical realms. We are not physical beings living in the physical spirit realm, but we are spirit beings in the realm of the physical, in the physical realm. So it means you and I, we need to be constantly in the spirit realm. We, we need to find our place and our position in, in that realm so that we can become influential and we become to, to begin to dictate the affairs of our lives. When, when you look at this scripture, the Bible says Joseph is born. You know, when I was looking at this scripture, I realized one thing, that there are certain things in life that, 
that begin to point to change of seasons or to change of time. The birth of Joseph signified something in the life of Jacob. It signified a new season where he can begin now to prosper, where he can begin now to, 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 you know, to, to flourish in the land where he was living in. For the past 14 years, he has been laboring for Laban. For the past 14 years, he has been working for someone. Nothing has been happening in his life. But the birth of this young boy is a, is a pointer in his life of change of seasons. And now the challenge with, G with Joseph, with, with Jacob, he is not realizing what is happening. You know, Laban quickly picked it up in the realm of the spirit. Uh, that the reason why I am being blessed is not because of what I have done. But the reason why I am being blessed is because of the presence of this young man. There, there's something in Jacob that is causing me to, to flourish. There's something in Joseph, uh, in, jo in Jacob, sorry, that is causing me to prosper. It is not my ability. It's not my gods. It is not the things or my knowledge or my intellect, uh, but it is my connection to this young man that is connected to the realm of the spirit. And, and, and Jacob is not understanding these things. And, and when Laban comes in to, to Jacob, he's saying, I've learned something by divination. In other words, I, I connected not by the Holy Spirit, but I connected by the other spirits and I've understood that the reason why I am being blessed is because of your presence in my life. So in other words, the enemy understands, you know, the, the enemy has the capacity and the ability to engage us in the realm of the spirit. But as long as you and I, we are operating from the, from the physical realm, we are not able to stand against what he does in the spirit realm. And Laban is saying by the, by the divination or by the use of my, my God, I have learned that I am being blessed by your presence. It means there are certain people, when they come into your life, your life changes all of a sudden. There are certain people when God brings them into your life, your life totally shifts. And you and I, we need to come to a place where we, we, we are able to identify these people. You know, Laban was able to identify that the reason why I am prospering is not because of my gods, but it is because of what this young man carries. He understood that the reason why my house is prospering is because of the spirit or the grace that this young man has brought into my house. You know, there are certain people when they come into your life, the grace which they carry, it totally impact and shift your life. You, you need to open up your eyes and begin to identify these people because they are beneficial to, to the fulfillment and the manifestation of your destiny. And Laban is realizing that the only way he can rise up is because of Joseph, of, of Jacob. And he says, I don't want you to go. Name your price. Now, when, when you're operating in the realm of the spirit, God, in other words, he prepares a platform for your blessing. You know, this man in Laban is not understanding that this man, Jacob, has already seen things in the realm of the spirit. And he says to him, name your price. Whatever you tell me, I'll give it to you. He did not understand that God had already revealed the, the strategy for the blessing of this man. In this season, I pray that may God give you divine strategies. In this season, I pray that may God give you divine strategies. You know, when you read the Bible, Jacob already had a strategy for his blessing. You know, he says to Laban, I'll go among your sheep. I'll only pick the spotted, the speck. And, 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 and those who, that, that, that don't, have, don't have one color, I'll, I'll pick only those animals. And, and Laban is so much excited because when he looked among his flocks, the little number of, of animals was those with the speckled or with spotted spots. But you know, he did not understand that this man already had a strategy. You know, in this season, when things are happening as they are happening, the church needs strategy. How are we going to maneuver in an environment like this? 
How are we going to operate in a season like this? How are we going to go through the crisis that we are going through? It's no longer church as usual, but we need the divine strategy. Now, when you look at this man, how can you take ordinary trees, ordinary branches, ordinary sticks, and put them before goats, put them before sheep, and, and they begin to dictate the color and the gender of the sheep or the animal that is going to be birthed? How can you do that when you're operating in the realm of the spirit? in the realm of the in the physical realm you can only do that when you are operating in the spirit realm jacob is understanding one thing that i can influence the things in the physical realm why because i I'm, I'm living in the spirit realm and he's taking these sticks he's taking these branches and he's putting them before the goats before the sheep and before the animals and all of a sudden, he begins to dictate the kind of animals that are going to be birthed. The only way he can do that is when you have a connection in the realm of the spirit. Because it's not just a physical birth. The birthing has to start in the realm of the spirit. And when you read chapter 31, Jacob is saying to his wives, in a dream, I saw these things. In a dream, these things were opened up to me. In other words, in the realm of the spirit, I begin to see the kind of animals that were being birthed. You no, know, me putting branches, me putting sticks before these animals uh, is just a strategy, but I've already seen what is happening in the realm of the spirit. And, and Jacob is saying to his wives, I'm able to influence the physical realm by my existence in the spirit realm. Listen to me, church. We, we are living in a time where the church must begin to manifest God. I believe we are in a season, in an age where we must begin not only to, 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 to speak about God, but we must come to a place where we must begin to demonstrate this God. You know, I was saying to the church that this year, this year is a year of manifesting God. We, we cannot keep on talking about God. We, we cannot keep on declaring about God. We have to manifest him. And the only way we can manifest this God is when we begin to operate in the realm of the spirit, is when we become you know, connected to the spirit realm and we begin to download the strategies. We begin to download the things of the spirit. You know, the Bible says even demons are subject in your name. In other words, when you're connected to the realm of the spirit, you are able to influence your environment. I pray that as we engage God in this season, may, may we become so much influential around the areas where we are. In our offices, may we influence. In our workplaces, in our homes, with our children, may, may we become influencers. Why? Because we carry something within us, something that is from above. You know, Jacob is able to influence his environment. Why? Because of what he is carrying inside him. He's able to influence the things around him because of the glory that he's living in. You know, we don't need to come in and to come out of the presence of the living God. We need to dwell in there every day, every morning, every second. And the moment we become spiritual beings, the moment we become people and women of women and men of God, full of the spirit, we'll be in a position where we can influence. David, Jacob had a, a, a strategy. God showed him things in the spirit. When you live in the realm of the spirit, you have an advantage. Why? Because God began to show you things before they exist. The church so many times we are taken by a surprise. Why? Because we are not seeing things before they happen. The, the reason why miracles, we call them miracles, uh, is because we are not seeing the original thing uh, in the realm of the spirit. But the moment we see the original thing in the realm of the spirit, uh, we, we are not taken by surprise by the things that happen around us. And Jacob is not surprised by what is happening around him. Why? Because he had already seen the things in the spirit. God gave him a strategy. And not only that, God gave him instructions. 
Listen to me, people. When you live in the realm of the spirit, you don't only get strategy, but you get instructions. God instructed this man what to do. And it is the instruction that brings you to the fulfillment of your destiny. Every instruction, once it is fulfilled, it means that it can begin to bring you closer to the fulfillment of what God has said must be happening in your life. And, and I've realized one thing, when you read the story of Jacob and Laban, there, there came a time whereby Jacob ran away from Laban, and Laban tries to pursue him, but God says to Laban, don't say anything good or bad against this man. You know what is happening? Jacob is operating under instruction. And the instructor is, you know, the instructor is obliged to make sure that this young man is protected. Why? Because of the instruction that he carries. Listen, every instruction that you carry, it brings a protection with it. It brings a covering with it. It brings aid with it. It causes you to stand tall in the midst of things that are not easy and things that are not things that are difficult. You know why? Because the instructor has a mandate to make sure that your obedience brings forth a manifestation of his instruction. So Jacob is so much protected that Esau had no power against his life. That even, even Laban had no authority over his life. That even the nations around him had no power and no authority over his life and his, his family. You know why? Because of the instruction that he carries. And I pray that even today, this morning, may God give you a strategy. You have been struggling and you've been asking yourself, how do I go out of this? Thing? How do I maneuver from all this? May God give you a strategy. And I pray that within that strategy, may God begin uh, to give you instructions of what needs to be done. It is your obedience to the instructions that brings the fulfillment, that brings you know, you know, blessings. The blessings, they don't operate because you have had an instruction. The blessings operate because you have, you are obedient to the instructions. May God give you an instruction. May God give you sealed orders. Don't leave your home without an instruction. Don't change the direction in the course of your life. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but don't change the direction in the course of your life without the proper instructions. Don't begin to do new things. Don't begin to change things midway without instruction. What is going to save you in this season is not what you know, but it's what you have heard is the instruction that you carry. This season, ladies and gentlemen, the people who are going to survive in this season are men and women that are connected to their God. Men and women that are connected to the realm of the spirit who constantly hear his voice. That's why Jesus will say, I constantly see my father working. That's why he would say, I, I, I see my father doing this thing. I see my father healing. In other words, he's saying, I am walking and I'm operating according to the orders I have received. I do not divert from my instructions. I do not divert from my orders. Why? Because I'm operating according to what God has given me. And I pray that in this season, may God give you instruction. May God instruct you. In the things that you do not understand, in the things that are bringing confusion and uncertainty in your life, may God bring instruction. And the Bible says the entrance of his word, it, it, it enlightens, it makes the simple wise. In, in other words, once an instruction comes from God, it is simplifies everything. It, it illuminates your path. It causes you to understand. It causes you to laugh at the things that they're going through. That's why when I started, I said, uh, the things we are going through in our lives, they are not there to destroy us or to bring us down, but they are there to strengthen us. The moment you have an instruction from God, no matter what you go through, it ceases to have power and authority over your life. Why? Because you understand that the instruction which I carry 
it must be fulfilled. So no matter what the enemy brings, it's, it is, you know, it's, going, it's not going to bring me down. It's not going to change anything. The instruction is not going to be changed because of what the enemy is saying. Jacob had a strategy. Jacob had an instruction. And Jacob was able to influence the things around him. Everything around him began to prosper because of the divine hand that was upon, upon his life. He was able to be influential in his time. He was able to be influential in his season. Why? Because of the connection that he had with his God. This man was so much connected to the realm of the spirit that even whoever comes into contact with him, he was able to influence their lives. And I pray that today, may you be an influencer in your generation. May, may you begin to influence the environment that you are living in. Like I said before, when you read the book of Luke, chapter number 10, verse number 17, the disciples are saying to Jesus, even the demons are subject to us. In other words, we are able to influence the environment. We, we, we enter the environments and we are able to influence things there. You know, when you live in the realm of the spirit, you begin to dictate things that must happen around you. You begin to influence your environment. You begin to influence the things that, are, you know, you are in control. You are in charge of your environment. There, there is no demon, there is no devil, there is no spirit that can, can must have access in your environment. Why? Because you are able to influence that environment. And I want to challenge you today. You and I, we need to engage ourselves in the realm of the spirit. The, the spirit realm must become our reality in the, in the physical realm. Until we are able to stay in the realm of the spirit and not be visitors in the realm of the, you know, that's when we can become influential in our environment. Several times we go in, several times we go out, several times we go in, and, and we leave. You know, things around us begin to dictate uh, uh, our spirituality. Things around us begin to dictate uh, our level of connection with God. But I want to challenge you. Your level of, of, you know, your level of connection with God must begin to dictate the things around you. The physical realm must not dictate how you operate in the, in the spirit realm. But, but, but the spirit realm must begin to, 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 to you know, the, the spirit realm must begin to dictate what happens in the spirit realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying today, church? And I pray that the Lord help us. So this morning, this has been on my heart. This man is able to change his environment just by being in the realm of the spirit. And I've realized one thing, whatever you carry, it attracts the things around you. It attracts the right kind of people. Whatever you carry with you, the grace, the glory that you carry, it attracts the blessings that must come to your life. It's, it's not about who you know, it's not about where you go, but it, it is about what is inside of you. What you carry in you, what did Jacob carry in him, was he able to dictate and to influence and to cause this man to be blessed. That even his demons and his pagan gods picked it up in the spirit and said to Laban, Laban, you are being blessed not because of us, but you are being blessed because of your proximity to this young man. Keep him around you. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Demons were able to pick, to pick it up in the realm of the spirit and say to, the, to Laban, Laban, this young man is the reason for your prosperity. This young man is the reason for why things are happening the way they are happening in your life. And I pray that may God open up your eyes. May God bring the right people around you. May God bring the right men, the right women, the right, the right partners around you who can begin to open up doors for you so that you can begin to rise. Some 
Times we make mistakes in bringing the people around us. Uh, and instead of us being blessed by reason of these people, our lives turns upside down. But I pray that today may God bring the right people. May, may God bring the people that are like Jacob, that carries the right spirit, that carries the right glory, that possesses the right anointing, that possesses the right grace, that once they come in your life, your life totally changes. Allow me to pray. Father, we thank you this day. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Holy Spirit, we ask by your glory and by your grace that in this season, may you cause us to manifest of your presence. May you cause us to manifest of your character like never before. In a time where the world is seeking and is looking for answers, uh, Holy Spirit, may you cause us that we may begin to manifest your glory like never before. May you raise the Jacobs of our time, men and women that carry your glory, men and women that carry your anointing, that wherever they go, whatever space they come into, it tot they totally influence and they totally change the environment. We pray that, Lord God, today may you give us strategies of the spirits. May you give us instructions, Lord, instruction that brings us to the fulfillment of our destiny and the fulfillment of our, our blessings and the fulfillment of our dreams uh, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every family. We thank you for every individual, Lord, today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you so much. May God richly bless you.